Hello friends, welcome to this video on the gating systems used in sand casting. As you know, uh, we have two types of molds, the open mold and the closed molds. Now in open, open molds, we can uh, directly pour modern metal in the mold cavity. So we don't need any complicated gating system here. But when it comes to closed molds, since the mold cavity is covered from all sides with sand, we cannot pour any molten metal directly into the mold. So here comes the role of gating systems. So gating system uh, is actually a channel through which molten metal flows from the pouring cup to the mold cavity. So when we pour molten metal inside the pouring cup, it flows through the gating system and finally it re reaches the mold cavity. Now let us try to understand different components of a gating system one by one. Uh, the first component is the pouring cup. Let us uh, now magnify the pouring cup in order to analyze it closely. So when we pour the mold, uh, hot molten metal, the uh, lot of turbulence takes place inside the um, pouring cup. So the pouring cup helps us to, uh, to reduce the turbulence by allowing the molten metal to settle for some time. Now connected to the cup is a taper section called the sprue. The molten metal flows from the cup to the sprue but wait here you can see that the sprue is tapered the question is why is the sprue tapered is there any special re uh, reason behind this let us see suppose the sprue is straight uh, is made straight as seen here so in this case the molten metal while flowing will tend to uh, get separated from the inner walls of the sprue so as a result some uh, air respiration will take place and the um, uh, will take place uh, take place and the molten metal will carry these air bubbles along with it into the mold cavity okay so the result will be a defective casting because uh, we will have, have air pockets in the casting on the other hand in case of a tapered sprue the uh, when the molten metal of, uh, uh, flows through it the molten metal uh, remains strict to the uh, inner walls while flowing flowing so no chance of air respiration is there okay is it clear so this is why we don't use straight sprue so uh, now uh, we have a tapered uh, sprue to reduce the aspiration right now connected to the sprue is the sprue well now what is the sprue well the sprue well is our final um, attempt to reduce the to reduce and nullify any any remaining turbulence in the molten metal so when the molten metal flows into the well from the sprue it settles down from uh, settles down here and from uh, from this section it moves uh, into the runner in a perfectly laminar manner so in the runner the flow should be very laminar because any kind of turbulence uh, turbulent flow will erode the sand particles from the inner walls and it will take these particles inside the mold cavity okay so finally uh, the molten metal will reach the mold cavity through this runner now a very important component is the riser this is the last part of the gating system uh, uh, to get uh, filled and solidified okay so so once the molten metal uh, fills the mold it then goes goes on to uh, fill the riser but the question here is why do we want to fill the riser when the mold is already filled our main intention is to fill the mold so once the mold is filled up why we want to um, uh, pour more molten metal into the riser the reason is metal shrinkage in one of my previous videos i have explained how metals shrink during solidification right so once the mold is filled up with molten metal it starts to cool down and during it is during that solidification process the metal shrinks like this okay so to compensate for this shrinkage extra molten metal will now flow from the riser to the cavity and thus this shrinkage will be compensated so this is uh, this is the function of the riser to compensate for sh uh, shrinkage okay so now there is one more component left the ingates the molten metal flows from the runner to the mold cavity through these ingates these ingates are connecting channel between the runner and the uh, mold cavity now uh, okay now one more thing when we melt um, metals in furnace at high temperature actually the metals react with atmospheric oxygen and produces slags or impurities okay 
so uh, you have to remember that the density of this uh, impurities or slag it is always lighter than the parent metal which we are going to melt so they they uh, will flow toward the uh, parent metal because their density is less but the problem is when we pour the molten metal inside the gating system the slags will also uh, try to um, move inside the mold cavity and if it happens we will get a defective castings so there has to be some provision to trap the slags in order to prevent them from flowing in the cavity so for this purpose we have uh, um, the runner is extended up to a, a small length so what happens when the molten metal flows through the sprue to the runner the metal first flows and hits the runner extension okay at the extreme right right side and then it enters the cavity through the end gates in doing so the slag gets trapped in the runner extension and cannot flow inside the cavity since they are lighter than the parent uh, parent metal okay and the parent metal will not al allow these uh, lighter slags to enter the mold cavity so this was all about the gating system used in uh, sand casting hope you like the video let me know in the comment section in case of any doubts and also uh, you can tell me if you want me to create any videos on specific topics of your choice so thank you guys for watching and yes do not for, uh, please do not forget to sub subscribe this channel for more informative videos thank you